So somebody asked me to show some of the mics that I have. I mentioned in a previous video, I had a bunch of money invested in microphones. So I don't usually flex this way, but I figured what the hell, I'll do this, this one occasion. So here you go. This is just some of the mics that I have left. Um, so we'll start with the most expensive. These are Neumann mics, TOM 103s. They're about 11, 1200 bucks a piece. This is a dating microphone, I think it's like 400 bucks. Classic EV, EV, uh, Electro Voice RE, I think it's 27. Yeah, RE 27 is like 450 bucks. This is cheap, 100 bucks. Rode mic, I think it's like 200 bucks now, maybe 300 bucks. Little Sony mic, I think what that one is. I think it's not expensive, a couple hundred bucks. This is expensive, this is an AVX Sennheiser mic. I think this set's about 900 bucks, 1,000 bucks, forget now. I just picked these up, two little roll mics. These are cheap, like 200 bucks. So right there, just some of the mics. I sold others. I've actually had some, somebody, I've lent them one of my mics. But, uh, so it's like 1,000, 2,000, 2,005, 3,000. Maybe right here, 4,000. So one, two, three. These two will say four. Yeah, maybe four and a half thousand, give or take, before tax and mics that you have here. So there you go. It could add up pretty quick. I think the general message I was trying to make was that when you start making money, you can get into um, a habit of just spending too easily, spending too easily, spending five thousand. I spend more, trust me, on equipment that you may or may not need. That being said, when you're in business and when your business is dependent on a particular tool like if you're a programmer you want to make sure you have a good piece of hardware you want to have a good software and you want to have a good hardware so it doesn't get in the way of your job fortunately as developers these days you don't need much to actually write code in terms of power computers are so powerful these days you could use a five six year old laptop and in most cases, you're gonna be more than fine. For me, with video production, I kind of went overkill. Like I got this cinema camera here behind me. Amongst other cameras that are pretty expensive, like I'm using a Canon EOS R right now, a couple grand. I got some, a few other pieces. What I've done with microphones, I've done with cameras, but cameras are more expensive. But you know what? Now that I know my way around cameras, I know my way around mics, I'm much more efficient. Last thing, when you do buy equipment, if you're not going to use it anymore, just sell it right away because most equipment is just going to lose value over time, especially things like uh, computers and cameras. Um, other types of equipment may not. Like microphones, strangely enough, if you buy top-of-the-line microphones, they uh, hold their value. They hold value. You know, they're actually more expensive now, I think, those mics, those Neumann mics I mentioned, than they were when I first bought them. But when it comes to cameras and stuff, this is going to lose value over time and all kinds of cameras because cameras are, you know, they're essentially computers really these days. As a general rule, here's a little tip. If you buy high end, it holds its value much longer, if not gains value over time. So you've seen some of my classic pieces like um like these chairs these are classic herman miller chairs designer chairs serial numbers they actually doubled in price since i bought them they doubled in price so that was a worthwhile purchase meanwhile this this is a designer piece it goes up and down it folds out it's a really cool table and it uh, has not doubled in price it's, it's held its price but it's not super high end it is designer but it's not super high end, and because of that, it won't go up in value. I've actually had high end Eames pieces, Charles and Ray Eames, you, you can look it up, uh, had their, their table and some of their famous chairs, and I actually sold it what, for what I paid last time I moved many years ago, because I didn't feel like moving them, and I was able to get them at a designer discount, so I was able to sell them basically for what I paid and uh, it, was, it was simple, it was trivial. Whereas uh, a piece of IKEA furniture, you're lucky you're gonna get you know, half your money back. If you're lucky, you're probably gonna get less than that. When you start making money and you're 
pretty settled in terms of where you're going to live and if it's to your taste if you buy it a super high end it holds its value and the great thing about the super high end it will look good 10 years from now 15 years from now 20 years from now if you buy a super high end classic designs super well built furniture not knockoffs the original they hold their value they hold their look and so if you're concerned about the environment and so forth and instead of buying furniture over and over again you buy it once and because it's iconic because it's classic you're not going to want to sell it.